Global Illumination. With Global Illumination, I'm going to change a few things in the scene. One, I'm going to put this back to a blend. Um, the backdrop, I'm going to add a new thing to it. I'm going to go to Face. And on this side, sign a new material. Blend. And this blend is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be green. Okay. Also, what I want to do is take down its eccentricity. It's, and that should kill all the rest of it. Ooh, the reflectivity. Okay, so green wall. Now, the reason I made this green is because photons play an, elect, uh, an important part here. This is, if you remember right, I filled this light with a light blue. Okay, I'm going to turn that on white or gray. Let's go gray. Before, I had to fake the fact that I could not cast a blue light on the back of this. Let's pretend blue is green now. So what I want to do is pick up this green and cast it into this shadow color right here. Well, that has a lot to do with the next one, which is under features called global illumination. Since I don't have any caustics now, I'm going to turn that off. Not that you can't run both. It's just running both would take too long here in these, in these little videos. Okay. So now let's uh, see what happens. And you can see it over here, see the green that's appearing over here in this area. A uh, little bit of green here, a little bit of green right here. It's very faint, but again, it has a lot to do with the fact that this has photons. And the photons are um, strong, but if you really want to see the effects of this, we could ramp up the exponent on the photon to like 0.5 and the number of photons, which is right here, global illumination photons, we could put up to like 50,000, okay? And that's the best way to learn this stuff, really, is crank it all up and then uh, let God decide, I guess. Oop, let's escape out of that. Go to this one. And of course, with that many photons and that much <laughs> exponential light coming at you, it is almost as if you know you you eliminate all shadow unless it's really shadowed. But isn't that a cool look at, right there? I love that. Those th things in the background right there, they are covered with green light. As far as Final Gather goes, Final Gather has its, its its advantages, but I really love the fact that Global Illumination is just so darn cool. Now, so that is how you use color and then bounce it off. And it's just the fact that, you know, some of these weren't touching the ground all the way. They're too close. Uh, it's how you presented light throughout the scene. But other than that, the gray turned total white. And that's kind of what global illumination does. It kills, if you think about it, it, it takes all diffused properties kind of away and then just emanates pure light at it. Okay, so that's how you ramp it and that's how you control it. And there's also an intensity for it. So as if the 0.5 wasn't enough, you could also 
just the intensity of it. Really, you know, to be honest with you, again, I would say, you know, the exponential value would probably be a good two. And, you know, the global illumination photons, you can up those to 50,000 and keep them that way, and it'll look like a nice scene. Just looking at anything else that I'm missing here. So actually ambient occlusions out here. That's something that needs to be covered. And again, here's the accuracy. Same accuracy that works with caustic. Same work accuracy that works with um, final gather. Up that number, the accuracy gets better. The slower the render, the better the look. All right. So on to the next video where we look at another concept.